Hey everybody, Dr. Paul Singh here describing a Maltino 3 case here in a patient who's had a history of uncontrolled open angle glaucoma on multiple medical therapy, displacing my 7 bicral stay suture now and it's measuring about 4 millimeters behind the limbus. And I'm just going to go ahead and displace a little subconjunctival injection of lidocaine with epinephrine to anesthetize the superior quadrants, but also help balloon up the tissues for easier dissection and hemostasis as well. As you can see, there's a nice nasal uh, previous trabeculectomy bleb there, so I'm trying to stay away from that bleb. Making about a, a couple of clock hour incision here down to bare sclera using a non-tooth forceps, a max fine forceps here, and a blunt Westcott scissors, trying to make sure we are always careful to not erode through or irritate the conjunctiva too much. Now just going to dissecting deeper underneath tenons, creating a posterior pocket for the Maltino plate to sit and reside in making sure I have enough space here. So I'm in a little more aggressive back here. It's really in between the muscles. So therefore, there's not much else back here. So you feel more, I can be more aggressive now. I'm going to take my curved Steven scissors and really create that pocket. A nice, nice uh, stretch there. Again, making sure you're underneath the tenons and creating that pocket for that plate to sit. Now I feel pretty comfortable and confident that we have enough space for that plate to sit. Here I am just inspecting the plate and making sure I test the patency of the plate here. I'm just going to go ahead and Take my 30 gauge cannula with some BSS on the other end. And it's gonna go ahead and squirt some BSS through to make sure that the uh, plate is patent. And you see nice egress of BSS on the other side of the plate there. And now I'm just gonna inspect the plate itself. I really love the profile. It's a very thin profile, the curved design. There's a primary reservoir there for the primary bleb to be created uh, and those anterior positioned eyelets for the suture holes. A uh, really well-designed plate for efficiency, but also how it hugs. You're gonna see here as I uh, place the plate underneath the tenons here, I can, I'm just gonna grab one of the sutra eyelets here. And as I grab it and just gently slide it back, it just hugs the globe. In fact, I've had situations where I couldn't suture very well and just hug the globe without any glue or sutures. That's how it nicely it hugs the globe. But I do, to be safe, wanna suture these down. So around nine or 10 millimeters behind the limbus is where I usually like to suture these uh, uh, eyelets there with a nino nylon suture here. Making sure I uh, do a three, one, one type of a pass here. And then suture one end, suture the other eyelet. And again, around nine millimeters is adequate uh, distance from the limbus. Tying the knots. And after tying the knots, I, I do like to take uh, non-tooth forceps and rotate these knots and bury them underneath the suture eyelets there. Just there's no erosion potential uh, later on postoperatively. But once this is secured, I'm going to go ahead and ligate the tube. I do this after I secure the plate. I find it easier to ligate the tube once the plate is secure so it doesn't move around a lot. But I use a 5-0 Vicro suture here, tying it nice and tight here, not to be afraid. I think if you use a 7-0, you have the risk, run the risk of uh, severing the tube because of how small that 7-0 suture is. So about a 5-0 gives you enough ability to ligate the suture with, the, with decreased risk of severing the tube. Now I'm testing to make sure the ligation suture is adequately uh, preventing fluid from egressing out, and it looks like it has done a good job there. So now we've successfully ligated it, taking my Van S scissors, creating my bevel up cut there to the appropriate size, about a millimeter or so uh, past the limbus there, just to make sure I have enough length into the anterior chamber. I'm just gonna go ahead and perform some anterior dissection with my Westcott scissors. Again, hemostasis achieved by using electrocautery. Measuring about two or two and a half millimeters behind the limbus is where I like to enter it and engage the sclera with a 23 gauge needle. Kind of going more, moving more parallel. And then once I'm near the limbus, re-aiming towards the iris there, actually more parallel to the iris. Once I enter, turn and come out. I take my forceps and just place that tube through the 23 gauge needle track. And there you go, the, needles, the needle track was sufficient. And now I feel pretty confident that the tube's in good position, making some venting slits, slits anterior to the ligation suture. Here I am using the 15 degree blade to create those venting slits, about four to five venting slits. And now making sure I have enough redundant conjunctiva and tenons to close the wound, which appears to have enough 
tissue. Because this patient was an 80 plus year old Caucasian female, I, want, I don't think I was too worried about erosion quite as much here. And, and so instead of placing a tutoplast or some type of pericardium or scleral pass graft, for cosmesis purposes, I went ahead and placed three Ambio 5 uh, amniotic membrane uh, pieces on top of each other. I found this to be very success, successful from an from a aesthetic perspective, but we have not seen any erosions using this technique here. So placing three of these over the tube, and now I'm closing tenons partly over the amniotic membrane. So now I have amniotic membrane covering the tube with some tenons covering that, and then I can go ahead and cover the both the tenons and the amniotic membrane uh, with my running atrial vicral suture closing the conjunctiva on top of that. And I found this has been a nice way to help also maintain a nice low profile instead of using sclera or pericardium patch or even cornea, which has a little bit more thickness to it. I find this is, again, uh, the most cosmetically appealing uh, technique for my patients. Closing here now with a running atrial vicral suture as any other ordinary conjunctival closure here. And we have a nice watertight closure. Again, very smooth cosmetic appearance. The tubes in the anterior chamber, about a millimeter and a half or two millimeters into the anterior chamber, parallel to the iris, away from the cornea. I'm gonna place some subconjunctival ejection of dexamethasone and gentamicin uh, till post-op day one appointment. I'll remove the stay suture and that is a surgery. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Please don't hesitate to contact me anytime if you have any comments or questions. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.